Yep, I still haven't taken a shower or anything yet today because I have been cleaning. Now I am knocking out to bathrooms. <laughs> uh, the thing I hate about cleaning, like with chemicals, is I'll get you, you breathe it in and it kind of gets you high. I guess that's, feel kind of lightheaded. But I've been needing to clean, um, you know, the tub, all that kind of stuff for a while. It wasn't really filthy or anything like that. It's just, you know, every once in a while you need to do like a good cleaning. And I have three bathrooms in my house. So, well, two and a half baths in my house. So, that's a lot of bathrooms to clean. Hey everybody, well, some time has gone by since the last clip. I did so much work today, I am so sore. I used muscles cleaning different things that I have not used in a while. But guess what? I finally moved all my DVDs to a shelf upstairs. Or the DVDs that were piled up there, I almost filled up that shelf. So not only do I have these now, I have one upstairs that's almost filled. Come on. I have a problem. Just kidding. Not anymore. I don't collect films as much as I used to. I went through a period where I was buying like probably like 10 or 12 a week back before I got married and stuff. And most of the films that I own, I got um, back when I could afford to buy them like that. Um, actually... The ratio switch is probably about half now because I didn't get a Blu-ray player until I got married. And that shelf right there, that big one, is mostly Blu-rays. So, I digress. That was not true. At one point it was, but it's not true. I just don't buy, I probably on average buy two movies a month whenever it's... Um, like a birthday kind of thing or like birthday months, Christmas kind of months, um, so on and so forth. I overindulge at those times. Average, I get about two films a month. Now, if I go to a place like a flea market or movie stop that is now closed, those kind of places, if I get a little bit of extra money, I will go buy stuff on Amazon, but I don't buy anything that's like over $20, unless it's like a Criterion. But for the most part, I get probably about two movies a month, if that. Um, there's been months where I haven't gotten anything. And then the next month I'll get like four things. So, But yeah, cleaned a lot today. A ton today. Um, uh, tonight... You know, as you saw by the footage, we went to Target, did our grocery shopping for the week, got everything. We don't have to go to the grocery store again for another week. Um, lately, we haven't been doing that, so we've been going like every other day, every day, pretty much. And you end up, you end up spending more money that way. So we try to get everything for the week. So we got everything for the week. Might have to go back for a couple things here and there, maybe like another gallon of milk or whatever. But... Everything, for the most part, is done. Dinners, all that stuff. So that's, that felt good, doing that. And I've been marathoning Gallivant, um, like I said in yesterday's vlog. And I have one episode left until the series finale. And that sucks, because I love the show so much. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, that's kind of what we did tonight. I've, I really made myself sick off of cleaning all that stuff, because I didn't have gloves on. And when you work with bleach and stuff like that, and you're scrubbing without gloves, you know, your skin, your skin is living as well. It absorbs, whatever you touch absorbs into your skin and gets into your bloodstream. Um, so they always tell you when you're working with chemicals to make sure you're wearing gloves. Well, I didn't wear gloves today. I used Ziploc bags for a little while, and I think I got my, there was one point where I had to take them off and to scrub something. And that's where I made a mistake. But most of what I feel is because of 
breathing in the cleaning supplies. So, um, but tonight for dinner, this is I'm taking a Zantac to help with my, um, I guess you could say my acid reflux. I have really bad acid reflux when it comes to eating stuff that's acidic. In the past few weeks, I've been taking one before bed so I don't wake up in the middle of the night with that really uncomfortable feeling. It happens. I just love a lot of acidic stuff. Red sauce, coffee, tea, um, everything. I just love a lot of acidic stuff and I have to be careful. So, I'm really excited about starting my treatment this week. I'm probably going to start it Saturday. And I'm very excited about that. Plus, it's my week, my birthday weekend. My birthday's on Tuesday. I'm off Tuesday. Um, but I'm celebrating on Sunday. Because, you know, some friends, some family are available then. Uh, I'm ha spending uh, the evening on my birthday with my mom. Me and my wife are going out with my mom. She might be planning something, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. But I wanted to close, I was looking over at my Criterions today. And I was looking at some of my out-of-print DVDs that I have. And one out-of-print Blu-ray. I figured I'd share them with y'all. It's unfortunate that these are out-of-print, because some of these are pretty amazing releases. Um, so I guess you could say these are my favorite, um out-of-print criterions, and in reality, I think these are the only out-of-print ones I have, but, um, three of these are on my all-time favorite films list, uh, top 100, I would say. Actually, these, probably top 50. So, let's go ahead and start out with one of the movies. I'm gonna go this way so you can, almost, you can see the covers. This is a phenomenal action film. Everybody knows it. I still have... I don't have it on Blu-ray yet. I still have my criterion of it. Robocop. Some people don't even realize that Robocop had a criterion. But yeah, Robocop. And it's the version you get on Blu-ray now. But it's... At one time, this was the only place you'd get the unrated version. The unrated director's cut, including excessively violent shot cut shots cut from the theatrical release to avoid an X rating. This film is brilliant. I love Robocop. Um, so yeah, that's one of them. This is one I got on sale at... For, and on my main channel, I made a video about it when I got it, I'm pretty sure. Um, Borders, when Borders were still around, they were going out of business. So I got this for like, I think, 10 bucks on sale. Brand new. And now it goes for over 100 bucks on Amazon, if that. It might be even more than that. And it is the Blu-ray release of the surrealist film Masterpiece last year at Marinbad. Yeah, that cover is actually pretty plain. There you go, you kind of see. But this film is amazing. This is an amazing film. I actually did an analysis of this film on my channel back in the first year of my channel. And it's still one of my highest viewed videos. But yeah, last year at Marinbad. It sucks that this went out of print because it's such a phenomenal film. Some people hate it. But some people don't. And I don't. Let's go ahead and get the next three out of the way really quick. One of them is one of those films that I was talking about. Um, these are the out of print Hitchcock films. Spellbound. Phenomenal cover art. Love this film so much. Um, Bergman and Peck are phenomenal in it. And there's a dream sequence that was basically... Um, I think it was... It, it was... Uh, yeah, it was by Salvador Dali. I thought he was like just like a consultant, but actually he actually did the dream sequence in this film. Brilliant film. Love it. Next up is Notorious. You could get some of these like used still, like with a Criterion, but not in the best quality. I'm shocked. Um, I think 
this was like $29. I think my wife bought it a couple of Christmases ago for like 30 bucks, brand new. Um, which is, was really, really good. It was under a used seller, I think, but it came brand new. We were shocked. And so it came with, and they used to come with the booklets and everything. And then of course, Notorious, great film. This is a very disappointing Criterion cover though. Um, but it works. It still works. It, it could have been better though, compared to these other Criterions. So yeah, this is Notorious. And last and certainly not least, Rebecca. This comes with the booklet. This comes with everything. Two discs. The, I mean, look at the artwork on that. It's amazing. And I love um, the, those double disc criterions back, you know, the DVDs back in the day when they had some amazing spine arts. It probably is backwards right now, but... It probably won't be, it's probably just because of the footage, but it won't be backwards when you guys see it. I think it's just backwards for me. Who knows? I can't remember. Yeah, I just wanted to see if it was backwards for you guys, too. It wasn't. You guys actually saw it. But, um, yeah, I mean, this, everything about this release is amazing. And other than, I mean... I don't know if all the special features carried over to the Blu-ray. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but still, this is a phenomenal release of Rebecca. Too bad these are all out of print. Um, another two. This film is probably, other than Eraserhead, maybe my favorite um, film that has to deal with, you know, surrealism. It is my favorite Benuel film, uh, Luis ben Benuel. Um, it's a, pretty much a tie between this film and The Exterminating Angels. But this film is just such a masterpiece, and I love it. The discreet charm of the bourgeoisie. It is a phenomenal film. Um, just to give you an idea what this film's about. It's basically like these group of people that are trying to get together and have dinner. But certain, certain situations keep happening that get in the way of them having dinner. And it's like different, um, it's not really a plot driven film, it's just a bunch of scenarios with the same characters and what they go through and they keep trying to have dinner. Um, this isn't really a spoiler because it happens in the beginning of the film. For instance, they finally get to a place where they could have dinner and then they walk in and there's nobody in there and then they find out that in the room over they're actually holding a funeral. Somebody died. So they can't eat dinner still because there's no way to serve them the food. Um, and as the film goes on, those scenes become so much more insane and crazy and full of surrealism and craziness. It is a brilliant film. And I really wish Criterion would actually do a Blu-ray of this, but there's a lot of the uh, Luis Benuel films that are out of print. Not all of them um, stayed in print. But yeah, this film came out in 1972. Yeah, it's a it's a brilliant film. Last but not least, The Third Man. Yes, The Third Man. Um, other than Last Year in Marinbad, these are all DVDs. When I bought this, it just came out. I didn't have a Blu-ray player yet, but I almost bought the DVD. I was like, or the Blu-ray. I was like, maybe I should just buy that Blu-ray just to invest in, you know, future in Blu-ray. I just stuck with the DVD, never ended up getting the Blu-ray. By the time I was around to get the Blu-ray, it had went out of print. This is out of print too. You can't find these, you know, brand new anywhere. Uh, the Blu-ray is very expensive to find. So is this DVD, but the Blu-ray is probably like double, sometimes triple the price of what this would be. This is still, you. I, think, I don't I haven't even checked Amazon, but at one time this, you could still get it new on Amazon, but it was like 150 bucks, and then for like the Blu-ray, it was like 180. Um, I'm sure the price has dropped as people tried to sell them. I don't know how much they are on eBay, but it's expensive, since especially, 
especially since they have like another Blu-ray of it out from another company. Um, Studio Canal actually released the this film. They took the rights back and released their own Blu-rays. But um, yeah, I wish I had gotten the Blu-ray. But still, I'm not into these because of making money. I don't sell movies on eBay. In fact, I have never sold a movie on eBay. And I think I've sold a couple movies used on Amazon for like $3 a piece. So I'm not into making money for collectibles. I have a lot of stuff that I could sell to make money off of um, in my collection. But I'm a collector of things I love. I'm not just a hoarder. I'm not a collector that just collects everything. Um, I just, every film in my collection I love or really like. I don't have anything in my collection I don't like. Everything that's in this collection, I watch. Maybe not every year, but I watch and love and reference everything in my collection. I don't have anything that I just that just sits on a shelf. I did all that um, purging over the past six years already. I had a big purge like a year or two before I got married, and then I did another purge a year after I got married because I wanted to upgrade to Blu-ray on a lot of stuff. but So yeah, those are my favorite Criterion out-of-print films. I may even have more out-of-print films in there. That's usually, that's the shelf that I keep all my Criterions. Um, there's all my Kino International films. So those are basically mostly silent films right there. Those are my Steelbooks. These are my Disney Treasure tins. And then from here down all the way to the ground is my criterions. I got close to a hundred. Pretty sure I may have broken a hundred, not sure, but I got close to a hundred criterions and I've been collecting them since... When did I get my first criterion? Um, it was when Seven Samurai, the first edition of Seven Samurai came out. Um, but I got it a couple years after. I think I started collecting Criterions in 2000. You would think that I would have more. No, I don't just... Um, I, I wish I could just spend money on them. Some people have so many Criterions, but um, I kind of savor them. So over the course of these years, I've only bought close to 100. That's still pretty good. Not everybody has over... Not everybody has 100. <laughs> not everybody has 50. Not everybody even... Not everybody has 25. Some people don't even have one. I got it close to 100. So, um, yeah. But anyways, guys, I think I'm going to go to bed now. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. I hope you guys aren't bored with these vlogs the past week. Um, I admit I haven't been as inspired as I usually am. But as you can tell by a few vlogs before, it has it wasn't really the easiest week in terms of some of the stuff I was dealing with. So I'm still trying to get it into the swing of things. My work schedule is still crazy for the time being. Um, but I'm going to have a lot of fun this weekend. And the fact that my birthday and everything is coming up, it's it's going to be good. I'm going to make sure it's going to be fun for me. Um, especially, I cannot wait to start writing. I cannot wait to write this treatment. Basically, I'm writing this treatment. It's not the screenplay. It's I've done all the pre-planning and stuff, but I'm going to do a full treatment of the of everything. I don't know how long it's going to be, but it's going to be a treatment. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.